Welcome back. The European Payments Council has proposed an innovative new approach to international cross-border payments based on the one-leg-out instant credit transfer scheme. The EPC is hailing their scheme as radically different to existing alternatives such as correspondent banking and interlinking agreements. We're joined now by Giorgio Andrioli, uh, Director General European Payments Council, to look at this in more detail. Welcome, Giorgio. Was I close enough on the name there, just to make sure? Yep. Lovely stuff. Good stuff. Uh, okay, let's get right into it. Uh, could you please briefly introduce the European Payments Council, what it's about? Sure. The European Payment Council, or EPC, is a, a private uh, non-profit uh, association which includes uh, 81 uh, members and uh, almost 4,000 uh, uh, participants to the schemes. Uh, our mission is the uh, integration and harmonization of the European payment schemes. And uh, uh, our role is basically to be the scheme manager for the SEPA schemes and uh, the standardization entity standardizing all the um, payment uh, uh, schemes account to account uh, in Europe. And today we include uh, 36 countries uh, growing uh, quickly because there are new countries that want to join the SEPA. So what is OCT INST? Yeah. Yeah, what is that? OCT INST is the first um, EPC uh, scheme that uh, uh, is targeting international instant cross-border transactions, um, which means uh, basically uh, the possibility to make account-to-account -account transactions in, uh, also in, uh, in uh, currencies different from euro including euro, but uh, potentially every, every currency. So why did the European Payment Scheme uh, Council sorry, develop the OCT INST? Uh, we developed uh, that, uh, that scheme for basically two reasons. Uh, uh, the first was market demand. So our members and our scheme participants asked for having uh, an international cross-border scheme. Uh, the second reason was political pressure. Uh, meaning, uh, of course, the G20 objectives, the FSB targets, uh, the pressure from the European Commission, uh, which asked for more efficient, uh, uh, faster, cheaper um, cross-border transactions. Yeah, and what, you know, when we talk about scheme-based approach, what is that and, and what e effectively is a scheme in your view? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, Actually, uh, let's start describing what uh, is not a scheme. Okay. <laughs> uh, which is uh, basically uh, today one of the most fashionable approaches uh, to, to uh, international cross-border uh, cross transactions here is uh, interlinking, interlinking agreements. Interlinking is a way to basically interconnect the two domestic schemes, so to secure basically cheap, fast, uh, seamless uh, transactions, but it's mostly based on uh, functional and technical agreements what is normally not covered in interlinking uh, uh, agreements is the legal part and the liability framework, which is exactly what is provided by a scheme. A scheme is a multilateral uh, frame agreement, which is binding for all the uh, contracting parties, including the, the scheme manager, in this case, the EPC and each scheme participant, which uh, again is binding for, uh, for all of them and uh, provide the certainty from a legal point of view mm -hmm. and uh, uh, also from a PSU perspective, from a payment service user perspective. Mm -hmm. So from this uh, respect, uh, a scheme is uh, uh, absolutely complementary to interlinking agreements and is, uh, in our opinion and based on our experience, very much needed. Scheme-based approach is, uh, is uh, something which built on, on this concept uh, and uh, complement what interlinking is, uh, adding uh, the last mile and uh, providing a complete, uh, complete solution for all the involved parties. Mm. I'm sure the, uh, the, uh, the delegates watching will be interested to hear what advantages are there to be gleaned from the OCT inst uh, and why should financial in institutions be, be interested in it? Yeah. Uh, the starting point is the massive scale of instant payments in Europe. Uh, as of today, we have uh, already uh, more than 70% of the uh, payment service providers in the SEPA that are already able to process instant uh, transactions. More than 20% of transactions are already instant in Europe. And of course, in Europe, we are already have uh, an infrastructure which is fully ISO 2022 compliant. And finally, due to all this, we also have a, a very cheap uh, instant payment transactions in many countries are already uh, basically for free. 
And we expect all this to further improve due to the new instant payment regulation that will make it basically mandatory for every bank and non-bank financial institution to, uh, to process instant payment. Uh, on top of this, uh, so on top of this installed base, the OCT Insta adds uh, transparency and the traceability of transactions that, as you know well, is very much needed from a G20 perspective and mm -hmm. is uh, an absolutely must uh, from an from international cross-border transaction perspective. You, you touched on this a little bit, but what is the current uptake of OCT Inst in Europe? Well, it, it is very encouraging. We basically started, we started nominally in November last year, but uh, really from a technical standpoint, the readiness was in March. 2024. In few months, we already have uh, almost 40 participants, which is which is uh, which is huge. We have uh, one uh, clearing house, which is uh, uh, fully compliant with with OCT Insta. We have uh, another uh, important uh, um, CSM, uh, according to European terminology, or clearing house that uh, will be able to process OCT Insta beginning of next year. And yesterday, the European Central Bank announced that tips. Their, uh, their own clearing house for instant payment will be uh, able to process OCT in 2025. So very good news and very strong uh, uptake. And, uh, and what does the future hold then? What are the next steps, if you will, for the uh, OCT and scheme? Yeah, of course, OCT is, is, uh, is in its uh, infancy. Uh, we are early stage. Uh, we spotted one of the, one of the issues uh, is about uh, reciprocity because the banks in Europe want to be able not only to process incoming transactions, which is something that uh, is, uh, let's say, given by the, 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 the participation to the scheme, mm. but they want to be able also to send the transactions out. Uh, there are two approaches for doing that. Uh, the, the first approach is, uh, is um, uh, the one that is uh, already included in the scheme is left to, to individual scheme participants to build basically corridors on a bilateral basis. But the other approach is more systematic, is creating agreement with other jurisdictions and, uh, and basically um, uh, be able to uh, set up end-to-end -end corridors. So this is the, the objective of DPC, to find agreements with other jurisdictions to, uh, to uh, even license mm -hmm. on a, on a, on a royalty-free basis uh, OCT instead to other jurisdictions that uh, would like to do that or otherwise making agreement uh, and uh, allow the participants of both jurisdictions to basically um, uh, be able to mm. send and receive transactions. Yeah, you've, you've described the advantages for sure of OCT Inst, but what are the challenges and how is EPC addressing them? Yeah, the key challenge is, uh, is uh, reciprocity that I already mentioned. There are a few other challenges. Of course, this is a schema at the very early stage. Mm -hmm. we, we still have to experiment and to try to see, to learn from, from the field what we, what, uh, what we need to improve. We already received uh, some, uh, some uh, suggestions. So we will address uh, them in the next uh, change management cycle. Maybe the other challenge, uh, which is more global, if this approach will, uh, will uh, prove to be successful, we will have to establish a more global governance for, uh, for such a scheme, and meaning that from this perspective as uh, EPC, I think we are open for any, for any discussion and uh, we are uh, ready to, to, to discuss with everyone. We are not keen, uh, our, again, our key uh, success indicator is the ability to uh, improve uh, integration and harmonization uh, and the favor exchanges and uh, let's say payment uh, transactions to and from Europe. So we are open to any possible conversation on this, uh, on this end. And we hear the term a uh, twin scheme approach. Can you shed some light on that? Is that is exactly as it sounds? Two different ideas running in tandem or what? Yeah, no, exactly. This, this is um, I'm a little bit uh, is what um, I already anticipated. Now, the ability to basically replicate the OCT in another jurisdiction. Um, uh, again, this can be facilitated on our side by licensing on a royalty free basis to the scheme. Mm -hmm. And uh, that this is the most we can do. And uh, we, are, we know that uh, some jurisdictions are already keen to do that. We are already talking with a uh, with, uh, with, uh, a lot of them, and it's very interesting uh, development that uh, expect us.
Well, Giorgio, it's been great to have you here on Cybos TV. I hope you have a wonderful last couple of days here in Beijing. Uh, that's Giorgio Andrioli, uh, Director General, European Payments Council. Thanks again. Thank you.